In this video I want to show an example on the use of the fwrite and fread function in order to write or read a binary file. In this URL you can find the example I will show you. Basically the idea uh, is that we want to store a structure, so a data structure that contains fields with different type into and transform it and store it into a binary file, so in a binary way. Better we uh, extend this problem on storing an array of structures, so an array where each element of the array is a structure. Uh, in this C program we have the typical include we use in our C program string.h because we use some string function like string copy and here we have the singular element of our array in particular each element of the array contains a name a name with a maximum dimension of 50 charter 50 charter plus 1 because we have the backslash 0 in C that terminate our array then we have an identifier that is an assigned initial number and a floating point number so here there is the declaration of our array in this example the dimension of our array is two elements but basically you can extend directly by placing here another number to any number of elements and here we fill our array with some content in particular on the position 0 of uh, our array, we place as name Steven, this as number and this one as floating point. In the second position of the array, the one with index 1, we place the name Julia, uh, this identifier and this floating point number in the field we name average. Here we open our file we want to write, we use the fopen function, here is the name of the file we want to generate, and the w uh, letter stand for write. Remember that it is write, read, or uh, read is the r, and uh, a for append. Uh, we check uh, the correct opening of the file. If uh, there is a problem, we said uh, we wrote into the screen the problem and we exit the, our program with uh, an error code, for instance, one. Here there is the function that allows to write our data on the binary file. As you can see, with only one function. We can write all the data of our array inside the file. So in particular, uh, this function has four arguments. The first argument is the pointer of the first byte of the structure we want to write. So since it is an array, uh, we use student because the name of the array represents the memory address of the first element of the array. Then the second element is the size of each element of our array, so each element has a size of size of struct type. Okay, and then here is the number of elements I want to write. In this case, I want to write two elements. FP is the file pointer that represents the target file on which I want to write. So actually I have also other possibility. So for instance, uh, instead of using this notation, I can use the percent student of zero, that is the position, uh, a percent is the memory address of the element student zero. So this is okay. Otherwise, if I have a variable like an integer, I can write here the name of the variable a, uh, and here I can write size of int and here I can write, I write that I want to write only one element so this is another opportunity in this case uh, so this notation or this other notation are the same ok because uh, I want to write one element and the dimension of the element is the number 
of element of the vector multiply the dimension of each element of the vector. But actually, I think that the one that is easiest to understand is this one. So with this singular command, starting from the first element of the array, I write uh, in a binary way a number of element that is uh, n stud uh, and a number of bytes that is n stud multiplied by cells of students type. So in my PC I run it and basically each element of the vector has a size of 60 bytes so I will write 120 bytes into the hard disk. Remember that the, the dimension of an integer is, uh, de depends on the architecture of your computer. So remember that usually you cannot write a binary file on a PC and read the same binary file from another PC because a different PC can have a different dimension for instance of the integer elements uh, then after the writing on, uh, the, the, on this system I close my file if I want to read the content I wrote into the file, I can use these other pieces of code. I open my file in uh, read with a read operation in reading. I check the correct opening of the file. Here uh, the trick is the same. So I can use fread student size of std, that is the dimension of uh, an element of the vector, the number of elements that I want to read, and the file from which I want to read. In this way, or I can use this, this notation that is exactly the same. But in some situation, uh, you don't know exactly how many students, how many elements you have in your file. So I decided to resolve uh, this uh, problem in the most general way. Uh, and so the idea is that I want to read students by students until I reach the end of the file. So this code works with 0, 1, 2, 3, any number of students. So I initialize a variable to 0 that counts the number of students and I read one student at a time. So I read from this file a number of bytes that is the dimension of one element of the array and I read one element, not two element, but one element because I don't know how many elements there are. And I place this element on the position on the memory area of the element n std of my array. So when I did the first read, n std is equal to 0, then 1, 2, 3, and in this way I fill all my array. The function fread returns the number of fields it read from the file. So, and the same the fwrite. So, when I did this fwrite, this fwrite return the number 2 because I write two students. When I did this f read, since I want to read uh, one student, if I can successfully read this number of bytes, so one student, this function return 1. So until this function returns the value 1, I go on reading students and so on and so on. When I exit this cycle, the variable n std contains the number of students I actually read from the file and uh, the content of the file is stored inside this variable. I close the file and here, as you can see, if I want, I can print the content I read from my binary file into the screen. That's all.